Hi everyone, my name is Brad and I vlog in the name Investing Doc. Today I'd like to talk a little bit about buying a house with a physician mortgage and how it worked out for me both times I used it, things I wish I would have known. So follow along with me. There's a couple of banks that'll provide physician mortgages and all a physician mortgage is, is less than 20% down with no PMI. However, even though there's no PMI, a lot of times that PMI is kind of rolled into a slightly higher interest rate. Some banks for physician loans will do all the way up to 0% down, but most will do five or 10% down. The 0% down is fantastic for those who graduating have no money and they wanna buy a house right away, which I would definitely not advocate for. I would rent for the first year. The very first time I used a physician mortgage, it was actually through Bank of America. And I know Bank of America gets a lot of hate. And honestly, besides my mortgage, I've never really banked with Bank of America before, so I can't speak to their personal checking and other issues. But I gotta say, when I did my very first physician loan, like four years ago through Bank of America, it was seamless. It was so easy. In order to qualify for the loan, I had to be less than 10 years out of residency. I had to actually be a physician, MD or DO, and I had to show proof of employment. The other benefit with physician loan, they didn't take my student debt into account, which at that time was six figures. That was about four years ago. The house that I purchased, I put about $25,000 down, including closing costs. And the benefit with buying a house is even though they're not an investment, is it is a hedge against inflation. And since inflation has been absolutely through the roof, yes, as inflation goes up and housing prices have gone up, if you're moving, you're moving from one expensive house to another expensive house. The only one winning is the realtors and the tax appraisal district, that's it. But what was nice is that I put 5% down. I put about 25,000 down, including the closing costs. I've had the house for about four years and I literally, my house doubled it in value, actually more than doubled in value. We just accepted an offer on our old house, and after all closing costs and everything, we're going to walk away with about a half a million bucks in tax-free income, which is pretty nice. I think the market is absolutely insane right now, but just take a step back, and I put twenty-five grand down, and I got basically half a million bucks in tax-free gains back. Now, yeah, I am rolling that into a new house, not all of it, but some of it, into a new house that is extremely expensive compared to where it was at four years ago when I bought. So I'm not really necessarily winning anything, but the tax-free gains is extremely nice to have. With this new house that we just purchased, we went with a different bank called Truist. They bought out SunTrust and bb and both of which previously had physician loans. I actually had a physician loan for my commercial real estate through bb and which was amazing previously. However, Truist bought out SunTrust and bb and and this was an extremely different scenario this time. Truist allowed me to put 10% down, but honestly, it was a complete nightmare. The very first issue that I had with them is that they really struggled to meet the deadline of a 30-day close. We actually had to extend the deadline because they couldn't meet that closing term. A bit frustrating for me since I sent all my pre-approval documents into them about three months prior to me even getting under contract on this house. So you might understand my frustration when I was a bit ticked off that they had all my information for three months and then they would come back with me with all of these questions. And they're not small questions. They were big questions on, at one point they were questioning if I could even afford to buy any house at all. It was like banging my head against the wall. The reason they were even questioning if I could afford the loan is... Truist took over bb and and my commercial real estate that I own through the practice is and was through bb and which is now Truist. Out of nowhere, two and a half weeks into being under contract for the house, the underwriter comes back and says, well, you can't afford any house at all because you don't have two full years of tax returns with your commercial real estate and we're only going to accept the liability and we're not going to accept any of the rental income. So of course, you know, I spent what, 1.6, 1.7 million on the commercial real estate. I had to put a lot of money down. So I still have a seven figure loan on this property. When you take that seven figure loan into effect with no rental payment for the last year and a half, it looks like, you know, my debt to income ratio is an absolute disaster. So keep in mind, I'm already under escrow. I already have my earnest money. I have you know, my other money that I put down, all the money that I put down for inspections, I'm about $14,000 in at this point in time to buying this house. And Truist is coming back telling me, we don't even know if you can afford any dollar amount at all, rather than the 10% down that they approved me for about now almost four months prior. The underwriter said no, they denied it, and I had to file an appeal. So that appeal went above the underwriter's head, and within, I would say, 48 hours, I heard back saying that that person, the underwriter who initially denied me that, was completely wrong, that they should have not done that. 
It should have been looked at under a different business entity, which it is. Even on my taxes, it's a total different business entity. And that the underwriter made a mistake. Keep in mind all the stress that this caused me. I had to delay my closing a week, which the seller could have easily said no and walked away with my money. And throughout all of this, the underwriter comes back to me before I got the approval over their head and said, you know what? I think that you would qualify if you put 40% down. You know, I was actually really just... I didn't even know what to say when they told me that. 40% down is absolutely insane. When three and a half months ago, almost four months ago, they went through all my tax documents, my income, my I sent them probably hundreds of pages of PDFs with all of my information on it. And here they are, while I'm under contract, after my option period, telling me that, you know what? Maybe you're gonna have to put 40% down for this house when I was initially approved three and a half months prior for 10%. Needless to say, I was really annoyed, really ticked off with the bank. And once I filed the appeal, the person who looked at my paperwork above that underwriter's, you know, pay grade or whatever, came back and said, yes, you're approved. Not only are you approved, we're going to absolutely honor the 10% down because you totally meet the down payment for this with only 10%. To sit there and go from everything's on schedule to wait a minute, the underwriter didn't approve you at all, to then hearing that I could file the appeal, to then getting approved, I thought I was out of the woods, but wrong. At this point, we are 28 days under contract. And I messaged my banker and I'm telling her, hey, I haven't seen the appraisal come back. I paid $1,000 for it four weeks ago. Where's my appraisal? I didn't hear anything back for two days. And then I finally hear back and they say, we forgot to order the appraisal. We're expediting it. We're ordering the appraisal right now. But we need you to sign a waiver saying that you're okay not seeing the appraisal because I don't know if it's a federal rule, but something about three days prior to closing, I'm supposed to be able to see my appraisal and have the ability to object or have file some sort of appeal. The bank tried to make me pay for the expediting of my appraisal. And then they also, after I said, hell no, they went to my realtor and said, maybe you should pay for it. And my realtor said, hell no. Luckily, the bank paid for the expediting of appraisal. I did have to sign a waiver. I didn't actually see the appraisal on my house until I was at closing. So I had no idea what it was going to appraise for until the day of closing. They called me and told me while I was on the way to the bank what, how much money to make the checkout for because I had no idea if it wasn't going to appraise it what it was, then I would have to make up that difference. Luckily, the house appraised exactly what I purchased it for. But buying a house with Truist was an absolute disaster. This is my third property to buy, so I'm still a bit of a novice of it. But the previous two properties with bb and and Bank of America was nothing like this with Truist. And I don't know if it was just all the stars aligned and I just got screwed over with this, but I can tell you that I would never bank with Truist again. In the end, they came through. I got the house. Everything's great. We're in the process of selling our old house, which I'll post about it in the future. But if you get a bank that you're unfamiliar with like Truist, it's really going to be a nightmare. As a side note, I will say that at the last minute, I did call another bank called PNC And I just asked them for a second opinion on if they could approve me or not. They were extremely kind and they told me that they could expedite it and they thought they could pick up where Truist left off and they thought they could meet the closing on time without having to delay the closing. Since the sellers agreed to extend the closing, I was already pretty deep in with Truist. I just heard back around the same time that my appeal got approved. I was a bit disappointed that I couldn't go with PNC, but honestly, hindsight's 2020, I would have totally switched over to PNC instead. I have no idea if they would have had the same issues. I would imagine not. But wow, the difference in communication between PNC and Truist was night and day. I have no affiliation. I'm not sponsored by either of these. And I'm just saying my experience with all three of the banks that I went through, PNC, Truist, and Bank of America. The physician loan definitely can benefit you. Consider it. Now, I do think my situation is a little bit unique because I own a business and I bought the commercial real estate. And the thing that really screwed up my loan was the fact that I had my commercial real estate less than two years. If you're not in that scenario and it would have been clean, Truist probably would have been fantastic. But in my mind, I thought that as a banker, they deal with lots of loans. They would have been well versed in dealing with someone who owns their own business and other real estate. And it didn't seem to be that way with Truist. Hope you all have a nice day. I'll be looking forward to posting new videos from my new house. Actually, the reason I'm posting from my office is because my old house is 1,400 square feet with two kids, a wife, and trying to run a business. I can't do anything out of that house. That's why I end up coming to the office to make these videos. Hope you guys enjoy them, and I'll see y'all soon.